So I was looking to, I played with some Python code, uh, but I kind of wanted to get a feel for what people need to do when they analyze data or when they manipulate data. And that I worked on some big data platforms and a little bit of supporting some of the ML teams. And I, I kind of understood what they were doing from some of my demos, but not really. So what I wanted, it turned out, um, I also had an assignment to go understand how Elasticsearch works. So that worked out. What I needed was a big data set that I could load into Elasticsearch and then do a little bit of uh, dashboardy kind of stuff with it. And so what I ended up using was uh, it turns out Elasticsearch, which is a search engine uh, that I needed to use, has a bunch of public data set examples. And so one of them was this public data set called Donor's Choice. And it's basically a gig and a half of compressed data um, that needs to go through a bunch of assembly and massaging so that you can combine it into a single index in Elasticsearch. And then you can go after that uh, data with queries and do kind of some analysis with it. And it turns out you can do a Kibana dashboard and they had already done part of that, but I needed to bring it up to date. So I spent, you know, uh, about three evenings trying to get that, figure out how to make that work and see if there was some way to optimize it and play with that. Uh, you can't see it here, but this is actually a fork of the Elasticsearch example. So if you go to GitHub Elasticsearch examples, they have some public data sets here. If you go into donor's choice, uh, you can actually see that there's a bunch of scripts in here and a Docker Compose. So in my case, I actually run that Docker Compose. That brings up Elasticsearch and Kibana together as a two node, one node of Elasticsearch and one node of Kibana. And that script is sized at to six gig because we're going to have a seven and a half gig data set. And this thing gets really big during the indexing process. Um, the other thing that I'll show you here real quick, the only other Docker, can, the other Docker, or not Docker in this case, piece I'm running is I have an Anaconda server running, or I'm sorry, I have a Jupyter Notebook server running, and that way I can um, add, what, what I found was w when you have a program that looks, that's pretty long, uh, it, now I finally get why the data scientists like Jupyter Notebooks. It turns out if I took the same Python script that I would run from the command line and I put it in a Jupyter Notebook, uh, I, all these sections could be run independently of each other, which was really cool. Uh, th what the script does, it just loads it up. We do some encoding. We load the documents. This actually takes like two minutes on my... So this whole Python program is single-threaded except for the last step. Uh, we do some cleanup where we start remapping symbols and all that kind of stuff. We rename some columns. Um, this was work was done by other people. I just kind of verified it's still working and adapted it to the parallel to the parallel elastic search load um, and there's some date work that has to get done and then what are we doing here we're going to rename some columns and then we're going to merge the three data sets in these tables into a single data set and then there's some timestamps and dates that have to be formatted we need them in the right format if your data is not in an industry standard format it makes it hard to analyze with industry standard tools and then you want to generate the latin long in a certain format so that you can tell where the schools were where the we have the location of these donations and those can be geo points actually put on a map in Elasticsearch and that took 1600 seconds so what is that 60 times a bunch right so it takes a long time to make some of this happen on a two gigahertz machine because it's single threaded and then we build an index in Elasticsearch and then we go out and we just it's really simple to uh, once the data set's been generated with six million rows in it um, we can just do a parallel load and just let it run till it's done while we've been talking, I actually started the load process and you, I have this Python script in the GitHub repo. Oop, wrong one, wrong one still, wrong one still. If we look in the scripts directory, um, you can see we have uh, some scripts that we can run here. And one of them is the Python script. And so this script will automatically bring in all the right dependencies for your Python. And then here we're off grouping the data by project ID. So we have all these records in these three data sets. They all need to be bound together by project ID. And then we have a really wide thing we can load into Elasticsearch. So I'm going to pause it here while this runs. And we'll see in a little while if we can get the data loaded. So one other thing, you can I use the Anaconda server and use the, I'm sorry, the Jupyter Notebook server. You don't actually have to do it that way. So here I'm in Visual Studio Code. 
So we're in Visual Studio Code. And when I double when I double clicked on the Jupyter Notebook file, it actually runs uh, Jupyter Server Local. So then you can actually um, do all this work from inside of Visual Studio Code. And so you can run each one of these individual sections that I showed you before and, um, and then rerun them. So this thing takes a long time to run. And if you blow up one of the sections in a single script, it's really frustrating because each of the data prop sections can take a couple of minutes or up to 10 minutes, right? Or even longer. So the Jupyter Notebook turned out to be a great way to run this section by section and keep reworking in a section until it actually worked. The only thing I will say is this data set can be pretty big. If you run these Jupyter Notebook sections a couple of times, you can end up with like 20 gig of data loaded because you'll have gone back and reprocessed and created new data structures, that kind of thing. All right, we're going back to waiting. So here I ran Docker stats and you can see that even with the parallel load out of the Python code, we're only chewing up basically one, between one and two CPUs on that server doing the indexing. This machine actually has like 30 virtual CPUs in it. It would be nice if we could get the load to go quicker. And I mentioned this before, just that I'd show you here that the Linux virtual machine or the Linux subsystem is actually taking 35 gigs of memory at that point between the Python program that's running the Docker containers and the elastic search. It took 3000 seconds to um, index 6 million rows. I thought I was going to run the timer on the whole thing and I didn't. All right, so we're back. We've indexed. Oh, let me show you. 6 million rows. The indexing process took 3000 seconds. And we can reload the index here. So you can see that we actually have, well, well it's 9.2 gig. I wonder why. So we have the donor choose index, which has 6 million documents in it, and it's 9 gig of data, which might be kind of interesting for us to play with. So let me just show you how we load the dashboard here, and we'll see if I can load it without errors. I haven't tried this after I fixed some stuff. One of the things we need to do is we need to create an index pattern. So we have an index. We can see the contents of the index. It's yellow because it's a single node, so there's no failover. Uh, we can look through the settings of how the index is set up. We can look at the statistics. I don't want to do any of that. What we need to do is we need to create an index pattern. When we create that pattern, we can then load the dashboard to bind against the pattern. So we have an index, then a pattern. Uh, it pops up with this. We can say create an index pattern. I come in here. I only have one index. So if I just pick that, type in a pattern that matches that, I can say, yay, I'm going to pick that one and then go to the next step. And when we set up the index pattern, we say that, hey, this is an index. And the index pattern, the, the time filter field, the timeline for this, because these are time-based indexing, is going to be the donation timestamp. I think that's the one I want. Yep. And I say, create the index pattern. So now we can actually query against that pattern. So what this pattern does, though, is it's gone out and found all the fields. So there's 123 fields in here, but some of these are dupes. So we have card ID um, right here, and then we have the keyword. So this one here is an ID that you can do partial searches against, and the keyword fields are used for aggregation. So whenever we're going to want to aggregate against one of these, we have to have uh, like the dollar amount or like we have to do the keyword thing. Numbers don't need that because uh, they're naturally aggregate and the keyword field basically can't be done a partial search. So when you aggregate, you aggregate on the full everything that's in that field. So now if I go to save objects, I can see I have two saved objects. I have the advanced settings and I have the um, index pattern that I built. So we're going to import the dashboard specifications. Basically, it's the visualizations. So we're going to import, pick, I'm going to pick the ndjson file. We're going to import it. Uh, we need to, oh, we need to tell it which index we're going to, which, what was it called? Which index pattern we're going against. We only have one here. It's donor choose. So everybody's going to bind to that. 32 objects imported. So what we should be able to do, so all of these are visualizations. You can see this little symbol here. And this is the dashboard itself. So if I pull a click on this, 
and we need it for the last 17 years because this is all old data so that's going to run a while a lot of gauges on this dashboard so you can see donation the total donations by week oh by month there's a weekly one here too somewhere I don't know where it is. Anyway, there's more gauges here that don't even show up. So I just wanted to give you a look at this. Um, and that's all there is to it. So you should be able to pull this repo down. If I scroll up and you can see it. And pull this latest down and use the video as a guide. And I hope you get something out of this and can use Python to build a whole bunch of data and drop it in Elasticsearch for analysis or for visualization.